no sound, but thank you guys so much for joining me during this daytime live um, for Get Crackin' on Christmas. I think doing the this in January is a little bit easier to swallow. Uh, some of us might still have our decorations up. We're kind of still in that holiday mood. Um, if you're in an area that is experiencing winter, it's a little bit easier to continue to create wintry cards this time of year. Yeah, no, Diane, you're not deaf. I just clearly, clearly, um, always have technical difficulties. It's just part of being live. <laughs> but anyways, get cracking on Christmas. This is my sixth year doing this or fifth year. I put it in my blog post and now I'm forgetting. But um, I've been doing this for several years for many reasons. Number one, it just got to be the holidays and I realized I did not have enough time to create the amount of holiday cards I wanted to do. Uh, actually, I see Shari is here. She started doing this with me back in the day. And we also were chatting, as crafty friends do, about all the holiday stamps we had purchased. But we did not get a chance to use many of them, if any of them. So we decided that we would challenge each other to just post one holiday card a month and then it just kind of snowballed from there. Thank you, Jenny, sixth year. So I'm continuing it because I really do love to do holiday cards in little snippets. And this way, each month, I get to kind of go through my holiday supplies, see what I haven't used yet, pull out some new stuff that hasn't gotten any love, and I also get to try to think of different techniques or supplies to incorporate with them. Um, and I personally just enjoy it a lot more, the process of creating holiday cards, instead of just batch making a stack of the same cards in the fall. I know a lot of people love to do that and that's totally okay. Um, maybe you like to do that and you're still gonna participate with me um, you know, going to participate with me every month to work on that batch stack that you're going to work on. Awesome. So the thought process behind this is on the third Thursday of the month, I am always going to post a holiday card and inspire you, maybe enable you a little bit. Then around that Thursday, maybe that day, maybe on a Friday, like today, maybe a few days later. Really, it just depends on what works in my schedule, but I will let you guys all know ahead of time. Um, the best way to know things ahead of time is to sign up for my email newsletter. But I will then hop on live and share with you guys how I made my holiday card. I also think this is a great time to work on your own holiday cards or um, be inspired to try something maybe different on your own holiday cards. If you're watching me live, I love that. Thank you so much. I know I'm switching to daytime lives this year for Get Cracking on Christmas, um, but you always can catch the replay as well. They'll be here on YouTube for you for that inspiration, all right? So thank you guys, yay, yay, yay. Rachel has some unfinished holiday crafts from 2022, but she still wants to play with them. Perfect, Rachel pull them on out, let's play with them, let's get cracking. So I am going to flip my screen so that we have my table. There we go. All right, so Jane's Doodles in um, Croatia actually contacted me and she was like, she actually contacted me a while ago asking if I had time to guest design during a certain month. And that specific month, I just did not have time. Um, but I said to her, you know, keep me in the loop, uh, keep me in mind because I do love her artwork. I think it's so, so cute. And so then she contacted me a little bit later and she was like, well, can I just send you some stamps to play with and to try out? And I was like, sure, that would be great. 
So full disclosure, uh, she sent me this stamp set, um, Wild Winter. She also sent me this stencil I'm going to be using today, which is Drops. And then she sent me another stamp set as well that I didn't incorporate into the card. But I fell in love with this Wild Winter stamp set right away because of the snowmobiling. So for those of you that don't know, I did grow up in New Hampshire and many of you will be shocked to hear this. But in the olden days when I was younger, I actually enjoyed winter. Um, but that was back when I was like doing activities in the winter. I was skiing, I was snowmobiling. I don't want to do any of that now. Um, I despise winter, but what I loved about this set was that it really brought back a lot of memories. My dad and I would hop on the snowmobile. I grew up actually next to power lines. And so very early in the day, we would hop on the snowmobile and we would follow the power lines all over New Hampshire. Um, believe it or not, you can go very, very far. And um, he would have to warm up my snow boots in the snowmobile engine and all of that. And I would never want to go home, even though I was freezing. And so snowmobiling is just a very special thing in my memory. So I really, really loved these images and I just had to use them. So this is the card that I designed and created. And we are going to recreate together um, during this live. Um, I always, whenever I Copic color with any cards on my blog, I always share the swatches of the markers that I used. This way you can maybe pull out the same exact markers, similar markers, or if you're using a different coloring medium, you can find something similar as well. Yeah, despise winter. There's like no love for it anymore. I'm not going to lie. Today on Cape Cod is very rainy and yucky. I will be going out to get my steps in after this live. However, just north of us, not that far in Boston, it's snowing. New Hampshire's snowing, uh, Western Mass is snowing. So I'm very thankful to be living far out in the water where we don't have snow quite, quite yet. All right, so I have a piece of 80 pound Nina Solar White that I am gonna be stamping my image on. Ooh, joining from Barbados. Hello, Paula. Yeah, not anymore. It's cold. I'm cold all the time. Um, I don't know. I have like poor circulation. I'm freezing all the time. I'm always putting layers on here at home and trying to stay warm. All right. Snow machine. Oh, Alaskans say snow machine. We say snowmobile, and my dad had a 1979, which was the year I was born, Polaris snowmobile, and we just had so much fun with that machine, so much fun, and on the trails, he would drive, you know, and I'd be sitting on the same snowmobile with him, this is when I was little, and um, if we got to a field, he would sit behind me and let me push the gas and like steer. And oh my gosh, I loved it. I was like, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna be using my most favorite ink pad, the Lawn Fawn Jet Black Ink. Works great with alcohol-based markers, watercoloring, colored pencils, pretty much anything. And again, I'm stamping on some Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock which if you are shopping from Lawn Fawn, their white cardstock is just that. So if you need to build up your stash of what you wanna stamp your images on, you can get some white cardstock from them. I know cardstock has been an issue for about a half a year now, hard to get, expensive and all that jazz. So we're doing the best that we can. Um, I was gonna say something else. Oh, I would love, love, love if you thumbs up this video. That'll help some other people find me. If you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel already, make sure you do because I am adding more content to that. Um, and all of the main supplies are listed in the description of the video, but I did pin a comment at the top of the chat 
where you can go to my blog post where I list all the supplies, all the markers individually and whatnot. So we are gonna dive right in and start coloring. Yay, I'm excited you're excited to get cracking. Yeah, power, power lines were perfect, perfect trails. Um, oh, I would love for you to send me some warm and heat. Yes, yes, yes. I know, Carla, I don't wanna think about global warming. It does make me sad living so close to the ocean. I'm very aware of, of that happening. Um, but yeah, it's kind of bittersweet that we have warmer, milder winters. All right, so I'm gonna dive right in and I just wanna point out we're doing a pinky red snowmobile. I'm very proud of myself for doing a little bit of a different color scheme. This was actually inspired by um, Shari and I are teaching our Frosty Friends class tomorrow. And when Shari and I teach together, I love to kind of have her design her cards for class first because she goes ahead in colors and colors and all that jazz. And I see the colors that she uses and I use similar colors on my images so we don't have to have a million markers in class. And it inspires me to do some different color schemes. So this color scheme was definitely inspired by our class and we're doing that class live tomorrow. Um, but we, you know, as with all my online classes, they're available to take whenever you would like. This looks nothing like the Polaris snowmobile that I grew up with. Um, ours was like navy blue and white, I think. And so, yeah, but I was like just having fun making it whatever color I want. So I always like to start with the dark marker and then blend out the edges with the light and then I fill in whatever is left with one layer of light. And sometimes I go back in with the dark to kind of add in, build up some layers, add in some definition. This is also a big area, so you got a lot of room to work with. Yay, thank you, Brienne. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. I love teaching with Shari, it's just fun. I love teaching in general all the time, but it's really fun. I'm happy I've convinced Shari to do some online classes with me. I think we have a lot of fun together and I think people uh, really enjoy it. All right. And so after this, I am gonna be fussy cutting out the image, which it's a love-hate relationship for some people, I know that but hopefully some of the tips and tricks I share with you will make it seem a little less uh, cumbersome. So tell me in the comments if you're watching live. Um, I've heard from some of you, you like this new daytime live approach. What are you up to? Are you actually creating? Are you secretly watching at work? Are you, I don't know, are you just hanging out and watching? And if you're watching the replay, let me know in the comments as well. Aw, thank you, Brienne. East Coast Fawnies. All right. What I love about this is I've figured out what to color everything ahead of time by making the card ahead of time. It also really helps me build up my stash because every Get Cracking card I make, I make at least two because of the live. Sometimes whatever I come up with to teach ends up being a batch of cards like we did in December with the bottle brush trees. Um, and distress watercolor crayon uh, pencils. We got a few people secretly watching while teleworking. 
love the daytime eating and watching good 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 hello claire watching at work instead of listening to a podcast yay oh hello jane jane from jane's doodles is here 6 16 at night in croatia so this is not a bad time secretly watching love it love it yeah that's one thing um thank you for mentioning that andrea um i think people get a little confused um if you are creating your holiday cards or working on your holiday cards while I'm working on this card today, this was never meant that you would have the same um, supplies as me. So totally okay. You don't even need to be doing the same techniques or anything like that. Um, it, it's just meant to kind of inspire you to get to get cracking. Um, if you're enabled after the fact to maybe purchase any of the supplies that I'm using today, that's a whole nother story. Um, but yeah, so thanks for popping in, Jane. So I'm going to be using the tees, the toner grays from the Copic line. And what I love about these tees is they are a bit cooler in gray than the warm grays, but I find them much, much easier to blend with than the cool grays. I always, always, always struggled with the cool grays. So I'm going to go in with T2 and we're just going to add a little bit of shadow. Um, this is kind of like a white part of the snowmobile in my eyes, but I wanted to kind of make it a little bit more industrial looking. So I'm just going to add a little bit of shadow. And now I'm going to just kind of blend that out with the T0. So soften up the edge. And then finish filling in with one layer. And if you're new to my lives or me teaching live, heads up, I almost always color out of the lines when I'm teaching live. Just the angle that I have to sit at, it. I don't know, it's just something with my eyes. But we got my trusty old white gel pen that I can clean up any mistakes that happen. So I'm not super worried about it. It'll all work out. And so now we're just adding a little bit of dark, dark gray to the snowmobile track or the wheels. I don't really know what this part's called. They're definitely circular and they help move the track around, but I don't know if they are technically wheels. I don't know. The things, the things we'll learn, right? All right. So I think it's so fun that these li the lion and the giraffe are like hanging out together in the snowmobile because this is this was kind of like my dad. We totally hopped on the snowmobile together and we're having so much fun cruising all around New Hampshire. Um, all right, so I'm just trying to remember, I think I am going to do the outside of the giraffe first. I was just kind of remembering what colors I used. No, you know what? I think it was the 12. Should have jotted myself some notes, but I didn't. So if we had a snowy enough season in New Hampshire, um, my dad and I would go from Pembroke, New Hampshire, which is where I grew up, which is a town just between Concord, New Hampshire and Manchester, New Hampshire. So if you're familiar with New Hampshire, that'll make sense. And we would follow the power lines um, to Warner and we would go to Mount Kearsage. And if there was enough snow, because the top of Mount Kearsage was very rocky, 
but if there was enough snow, we could get, my dad could get the snowmobile all the way up to the top of the mountain. I usually had to get off the snowmobile so he could like maneuver it up on the very last little part that was all boulders. Um, but I used to think that was so cool. So we have pictures somewhere. I should find them. Pictures somewhere of us up there, I feel. I feel like I'm remembering that existing. All right, so I'm using YR12 and I'm coloring kind of like that outer part of the giraffe. And I like to do that part first because if I do get any of this color in his spots, it's not going to matter because I'm going to be able to fill in the spots with a dark brown and you're never going to know. The darker color will overpower the lighter color. Hi, Melissa. Happy New Year. Thanks for popping in. We're doing a little bit of a lighter color for his snout, YR21. And before I do his spots, I'm going to work on the lion. And so what I was having a little bit of a dilemma with when I was coloring this is the lion is kind of a similar color to the giraffe, but I wanted them to... Um, obviously stand out amongst each other. So I went a little bit deeper and richer in colors with the lion. So I'm going to add a little bit of shadow around his mane and his chin with the YR27. Just a little bit because it's pretty dark. So it'll go a long way in helping me differentiate the colors. Oh, Danielle, that's a big substitution for tomorrow. But I bet you have other snowmen in your stash. And I secretly hope that we will enable you to want making frosty friends. That's the stamp set that is our theme of our class tomorrow. And it's been around since 2011. It's one of our favorites. So now I'm blending out and filling in with YR14. Some of these lines together are teeny tiny. So again, I'm just trying to stay in the lines the best that I can. While my cardstock is still damp from blending. I sometimes like to go back in with that dark and do a little bit less than I originally did, but just to help kind of richen, deepen that, that um, shadow. There we go. And then what I did for his mane is I just kind of alternated stripes. So we're gonna do YR27 first. I can't wait to share with you guys how I created the background. It's nothing super complicated, but I really, really love uh, how it came together. As if you are watching live, if you have a question, kind of putting all caps the word question and then asking helps me see it when I glance up um, in between coloring. And then if you're watching the replay, you can still ask questions in the comments. Um, and I will get a notification in my email and I'll come back here and answer it as quickly as I can. Always happy to kind of answer something that maybe I didn't clarify or you want some more information on. All right, this guy's coming together, super cute. Um, and so what I did for his nose is I actually am gonna use the warm grays. 
think it's really fun to kind of use different grays on a card. You know, I use the cool grays kind of for more an industrial part of the car card, you know, the snowmobile. And then now for the lion's nose, I am using warm gray. So I used a little bit of W6. And we'll do a little highlight on his nose with some W4. All right, so now I'm going to rosy their cheeks with R20. And um, it just takes a minute. I do gentle dabs because I don't want to damage the tip of my marker. But I just kind of continuously do little dabs until that R20 kind of starts to overpower the orangey color. Uh, hello, Jacqueline. Thanks for popping in. <laughs> Yay. Liz doesn't have Making Frosty Friends either, but she got a kit from Scrappy Chic. And she's cutting out some snowman dies from the holiday release. Love it. So what's fun about the online classes is you really can substitute anything. I just want you guys to create. That's my goal. All right, I'm just getting these cheeks to show up. And now we'll go ahead and do the spots on the giraffe. So for that, I used E23 and E27. And the spots are pretty small. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the darker brown, the E27, and I am just gonna go and add a little line of E27 on almost all spots. The smaller spots will get filled in completely with this E27. It kind of seems like you're like, Jen, this is a whole lot of work for no reason, but it really does make a difference when I go to blend out with the E23, having a little bit of definition from this E27. I think it looks really, really nice. And we're gonna do his little pegs at the top of his head. I do not know what those are called on a giraffe. Things I need to look up after, after class here, after live. And so I'm gonna take this E23, and if the spot is bigger, I'm gonna dab pretty much right on where I did E27, and then fill in one layer so it's a nice true light version. And again, it seems like a lot of work, but the reward is really nice. If it's a smaller spot, I pretty much just color with that E23, and the alcohol-based marker is gonna do the magic. It's gonna have a little bit of definition and a little bit of a highlight. And it just kind of helps make our giraffe come to life, I think. All right, so now we are gonna work on some teal. I know you guys are super surprised by that, but you know, my holiday cards, my color scheme, right? I branched out a little bit with my snowmobile color, but now um, they're the um, the gear that they're wearing, the winter gear, is going to be teal. All right. It is never too late, Melissa, to sign up for an online class with me. Um, what's great about my new website is with the online classes, the second that you register on my website, you immediately get access to the class resource page. And that will give you all the details. Uh, and the prep work, the supply list has been out since the class was announced. And then this week, the class handout was released as well. And you'll find the links to the unlisted YouTube videos. Um, so my online classes are now hosted on YouTube. You don't need to have a Facebook account to do any classes that were launched from September 2022 to today. So please go sign up. And if you can't make it live, 
then you can always watch the replay too. So it's never too late to sign up for any of my classes. I have quite a few people actually who have been signing up for really old, old classes. And I love that. I love to see them kind of come back to life for people and see what they create and post. So I just used BG13 as a shadow on the giraffe's uh, scarf and mittens. And I'm just blending it out with the BG11. I wanted it to kind of be really, really light in color. And then the lion, we're going to kind of do a bit darker and we're going to throw in some BG49 in there, which is a really dark teal. But again, I think it'll kind of make things pop and look a little different on the two critters. All right, so BG49, what I'm going to do is the pom-pom on the lion's hat and a little bit on that main part of his hat. I only need to do a little bit because it goes a long way. It's just a really deep, dark, rich color. And so now I'm going to pretty much go over that with the BG13, but see how I left a little bit of white, a little speck? I'm gonna then fill that in with one layer of BG13. And then I got a little fancy on the little fold up part of his hat. I'm adding little lines with the BG13, going over each of them a couple times to darken them up. And then I'm gonna take BG11 and just color over. So it'll look like he has a little texture uh, to his hat. Super cute, right? Yay. So now we are going to fussy cut. And I actually, I don't wanna fussy cut every card that I create, but once in a while, I actually really do enjoy it. Again, it's kind of like a little treat. And if you think of it that way, it's not so bad, right? So I'm gonna start by just kind of chopping out this block that is stamped on. I'll save this extra white for projects later. And I love my squeezy scissors from Fiskars. Um, these will work if you're right-handed or left-handed. If you have any type of um, finger issues, cramping, arthritis, these are really nice and easy on your hands. I've been using these since college, which was a long time ago. And um, I used to have to fussy cut out everything because back in the day, you guys, there were no coordinating ties for anything. So these were my like go-to. And when you're fussy cutting, just use the scissors, any type of scissors that you're using, slowly squeeze down on the blade, but turn your paper. You can see how I'm turning my paper. My scissors are not moving. And I'm just kind of slowly closing down on that scissor blade. But I am really just moving my paper for the most part. And I think the more you do fussy cutting, the better you can get at it. But again, I know it's not everybody's jam. We could have stamped this directly onto a card and done a whole different type of technique. But this is kind of what I was going with. I wanted to be able to use some foam squares with it, pop it up against my scene. And I don't worry about it being perfect. I just kind of work my way around. I remember back when I first adopted Mr. Harley, he's 14 now, so it was a long time ago. Again, coordinating dies were not a thing then. Um, I always would incorporate him, a picture of him, or a picture of him and I somehow in my holiday cards. And that's back when I did, used to come up with one design and I would make like a hundred of the same card. And one year I had this really cute picture of him. 
I mean, is there really any bad pictures of him? I don't think so. But one year, there was this really cute picture. I got them printed, you know, photos shipped to my, my house at the time. And Hero Arts had this really, I don't know if Libby's still on, but Hero Arts had this really cute little Santa hat on a wood-mounted stamp. And it was the perfect size for this photo of Mr. Harley. So I stamped out. I think I want to say I watercolor penciled and colored them in with a pinky red. Again, I know none of you are shocked by this. And I, I liquid appliqued the trim of the Santa hat, which is that liquid applique puffs up with heat and it's white. So the trim of the Santa hat and the pom-pom of the Santa hat. And then I fussy cut out 100, I think it was like 150, honestly, um, Santa hats. And they all got put on Mr. Harley's head on the photo. I just thought it was the cutest thing. I probably have a picture of it somewhere, but all right. Um, giraffe's horns are known as ossicones. Thank you, Jenny, for looking that up. Ossicones. I might still be mispronouncing that, but we're learning all kinds of stuff. And Monique doesn't have this stamp set, but she's using Oh What Fun from Lawn Fawn. That is super cool, Monique. That is a fun sledding stamp set. I saw Mary Lou was here earlier. I'm excited to see what she comes up with. She always tries to do something similar to me from products from her stash. All right, so now I'm gonna set aside that and we are gonna work on our background. So this is Distress White Heavy Stock, my most favorite white cardstock that I use for ink blending and a variety of other things. And I cut it out with the largest outside in stitched rectangle die from Lawn Fawn. This is Shari's fault as well, but I'm now obsessed. And I think I said this weekend in my art retreat, I pretty much use it on 98% of the cards I design. I think that's a fair percentage, 98%. <laughs> I'm gonna do some ink blending. So of course I'm gonna be using my ink stands so they hold my ink pads in place and I'm not gonna get any inky fingers. My tabletop is made out of glass. Um, if you have not ink blended on a glass surface yet, you guys, treat yourself to some sort of glass mat whether it be the Tim Holtz tonic glass mat. Um, I know there's a lot of options out there, but it really makes a difference to get a really nice, um, smooth, smooth blend. I'm using water-based dye ink. I'm gonna be using uh, Peacock Feathers Distress Ink. So I'm gonna be using my blender brush. And I'm looking for, actually I'll grab this little piece. I always like to have like just something to use to put my fingers on the paper so I'm not leaving any fingerprints behind, um, whether I just put lotion on my hands or what have you. When you are ink blending, go ahead and load your brush up with some ink, but then tap it off on your glass surface and then start blending on the glass. I'm literally pressing my brush down in circular motions and then bringing that color into the cardstock. That's gonna help you not have a harsh edge right when you go in. And just work it until you get the color that you want. I want a pretty bold, vivid, bright color. So I'm gonna get a good upper body workout right now. Um, because we are gonna be stenciling over this with some white pigment ink. So I really want the color to be nice and bold so that that pigment ink will show up. <laughs> Shari gets blamed for a lot of things. You're not getting blamed, Shari. I'm just giving credit where credit's due, all right? Inspiration. I try really hard, I've learned some things over the years where it's something that's stuck with me and maybe it's a technique or a supply that I continue to use. Um, and I try really hard to remember who I learned that from. So even though, you know, I've been doing it for a long time, I still give credit to that original person. I try. It's not the case for everything, but all right. I'm 
I'm just looking at the comments real quick, seeing if I if I missed anything. It doesn't look like it. So we're just gonna go to town, get a nice bold peacock feather background. Peacock Feathers has had a little less love in my studio since Salvage Patina came out, but I of course still use it. Two very, very different teals, but you know, you always kind of feel, fall in love with the new shiny item. And Peacock Feathers has been out a long, long time. Can't wait to see what the new color from Tim is gonna be, the new distress color on January 28th. I actually don't think I'm teaching that day. A lot of his Saturday lives, I usually have a class going on, so I have to catch the replay, but I actually might be able to watch it live, which is very exciting. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I have teal ink all over my desk. So I keep some isopropyl alcohol in a mister. I just missed my glass surface. And then I always, always, always have a flour sack cloth in my lap to wipe my hands off, wipe my table off. I actually, um, just fell on my table. I have a little bit of leftover paste. I'm working on a new video for you guys. So I just felt that. We'll clean that off my table at the same time. So now continuing on with our background, what I'm going to do is use that drops stencil from Jane's Doodles. Um, I'm going to use the Wendy Vecchi Make Art Station. Love this tool and use it so much. I use a little bit of removable adhesive on the back of my background just to kind of hold it in place. I'm gonna have magnets that will hold the stencil in place, but I kind of like my background to just kind of be there and not move. And again, this is that drops stencil. I like the irregular circles. I think it's so fun. I think the stencil will be really fun for oceany, watery cards as well. And I'm just making sure it's covering my whole background. And then I'll plop my magnets in place. I'm not gonna be ever moving the stencil into another position, so I don't need to pay attention to um, what squares my stencil is on or anything like that. Ooh, that sounds fun, a Vicki Booten class on the 28th. Super fun. I'm sure sh that you guys will be chatting it up about um, the distress color for sure. So I'm going to use a white pigment ink pad. This is the Lawn Fawn Yeti ink. And because I'm using a pigment ink, I like to use a blending foam. I don't like to use blender brushes with pigment inks personally. So I'm going to just use this blending foam, pick up some of the ink, and I'm gonna press it. I'm kind of doing like a press twist motion through the stencil. And I'll just work my way around the whole background. And what I love about this is because we have ink down already, the Yeti ink is gonna kind of take on some of that property, that teal property. Um, but it's also, you know, going to look a little translucent. I just love this look. I think it looks so cool. All right. So I'm going to take my stencil away and I will just clean the stencil later. I don't have to worry about doing it right away. I will either use the rubbing alcohol or I will get up and go to the sink and rinse it. Either, either way will work. And so I'm gonna just go ahead and pick this background up gently. Give my station a little wipe. Get that extra pigment ink off. 
And this is what the background looks like so far. Now, because that's a pigment ink, that ink is wet. So I'm gonna use my Ranger heat tool and just dry that ink a little bit before we move on to the next step. Ooh, yay, Libby says that Hero Arts has a Valentine's stamp along on the 28th. So lots of fun things to do. I have not yet, Brianne, I know. Brianne had a great idea. So Brianne owns the ink stand and she, um, the ink stand has rubber feet on the bottom. So that's what keeps it from moving around on your table. And so she recommended this weekend in my art retreat that she put the same rubber feet on the bottom of her make art station. And she shared the link with me for the rubber feet. So I shared them in, you know, with the participants and stuff, but I didn't order any yet. I need to. Uh, Karen's asking why I use foam for pigment ink and brush for dye ink. So my reasoning, Karen, is that the bristles on a blender brush are really fine little bristles that help us achieve a really nice smooth blend with dye-based inks. But pigment inks like Distress Oxides, um, or even if I just used a brush with the pigment ink, um, the Yeti pigment ink, that's gonna gunk up the bristles so that the bristles are now kind of chunky and separated and all chunked together. So I feel with a pigment ink or even a Distress Oxide, you don't really need those fine bristles to get a really nice um, blend. They're gonna blend perfectly fine for you and it's really inexpensive to have you know a couple handles and some foams or a different foam for each color or color family. And so I keep my blending brushes to be just for dye inks. If you are using your blender brushes for dye and oxide and or pigment inks, you wanna make sure you're cleaning your brushes really, really well in between or have different brushes all together because you don't wanna put your um, brushes that you used for oxides into your dye-based ink pads because it could ruin them. All right, so we've got our background here, and what I did next is I just wanted a little bit more snow. You know, bring on the snow is the sentiment on the card. Although I meant to say at the beginning, um, even though my card says bring on the snow, I don't really mean that, and I'm sure you guys know that. Like, I don't really want snow to come. <laughs> So I actually went through my supplies and was looking for just some cute snowflakes to use. Um, this set from Newton's Nook, Moose Mountain. I've used this before on a Get Crackin' on Christmas card. Um, so these were some really cute snowflakes. And then this card, Newton's, um, this stamp set, Newton's Toboggan. I really like this little trio specifically. This is going to show up in a Get Crackin' on Christmas at some point. I mean, we got three cats on a toboggan, so it's totally my three boys for sure. Um, and just so you guys know, on my website, <clears throat> you can search the name of an actual stamp set, whether it be from Lawn Fawn or Simon Says Stamp or Newton's Nook. So if you search Moose Mountain, um, the, any blog post where I've used that stamp set will come up on your search. So I always tag all my blog posts with the names of the products that I use. So it's easier for you guys to find some ideas, just so you know. So I'm just grabbing those little snowflakes. And what I like to do when I'm kind of stamping something all over is I definitely just use an acrylic block, and I love these smaller blocks from Lawn Fawn, and I just double side them. I put one stamp on one side and one stamp on the other, and that way it's gonna be easy for me to kind of flip it around and switch up what snowflake I'm using. 
Now, because I'm gonna stamp on here and I want the image to kind of come out a bit darker, oops, I'm actually gonna use my Peacock Feathers Distress Oxide. And that way this ink is gonna sit on top of what I already have going on with the dye-based ink and the pigment ink. All right, let's see. <laughs> Libby said, I thought that was a crazy sentiment for a gen card. And Shari said, I was actually going to say something about that, that it was a lie. It really is a lie. I do not want to bring on the snow. So no snow goddesses out there. Send me snow, please. No, no, no. All right. So I've got four snowflakes going on. So what I'm going to do is just start. So I kind of just start with the biggest one. I stamp, I usually like to kind of stamp it three times in a little bit of a trio, remembering to stamp off my background sometimes um, so that it'll appear to look just the way the stencil is, you know, off the side and it'll look more realistic. And then I flip my, my stamp block and I just start stamping this snowflake three times or so. Um, and then I'm gonna go to my other stamp block. And you can see, sometimes I'm stamping them together. Sometimes I'm stamping them separated. And then I'm gonna flip my stamp block again. And we got this little trio of snowflakes. And I just really like the little texture that this is adding to the background. And I love this drops stencil, but I think having the um, snowflakes stamped on top of it really lends it to be like, oh, okay, this is really a snowy background. Like it kind of helps explain the scene a little bit. All right, I'm just gonna add a little bit more. There, super cute. So you guys can kind of see. So same same color ink, but a pigment. Um, Distress Oxides is a pigment dye fusion. So that pigment property is going to help that ink stand up on top. And I'll put those stamps back later after the live. So I'm going to go ahead and set my background aside. I just remembered I forgot to color my letters for the sentiment. So we'll talk about those. That happens very quickly. Um, what I did for the sentiment is I used some Lawn Fawn alphabets. And my most favorite alphabet from Lawn Fawn is this Quinn's ABCs. You can see I even own two of them now because it's just nice sometimes to have extra letters. And so the big um, block letter is Quinn's ABCs. And then we're also going to be stamping and embossing Riley's ABCs for Bring On The, okay? But let me quickly go ahead and um, color my snow letters in a gradient. And I'm actually, since I already stamped and die cut them, I'm just going to grab a little bit of the Spellbinders Best Ever Craft Tape. This is what I use to hold my dies in place when I am doing die cutting. It's a low tack tape, but I always like to just kind of touch it to my skin to, to just make it a little bit less tacky. And I'm gonna just place my letters on here. This is gonna be so that it's easier for me to hold on to when I color. We do this in all of my online classes, so this might probably is not new, new to you. And I'm gonna pull out my teals again. So that BG49, BG13, and BG11. And the first thing that I'm going to do is take that BG49 and do the bottoms of each of these letters. And this is one of my favorite things to do, you guys, is to ombre letters. I do this with ink, with Copics, either way. Um, 
And it also works really well with some of the die cut letters that Lawn Fawn has, like Oliver's ABCs, Henry's ABCs. I just love the look. So when I like something, I just keep doing it. No need to reinvent the wheel. <clears throat> all right, so now I have all the bottoms with BG49. Now I'm gonna do one letter at a time so that as I saturate the cardstock and start blending colors together, the alcohol won't evaporate and I can get a nice clean blend. So now I'm just blending the edge with that BG13. And then I'm gonna do the tips with BG11. So I first blend that edge and then whatever's left for white, I'll fill in with just one layer. So it's a nice light version of that BG11. So you can see these letters come together really nice and really quick. So I'm gonna blend the edge with the BG13, flip right over to BG11. And I've been doing this a lot lately, you guys, where I'm not recapping my Copics as I am going back and forth between two colors. Um, as you're actively coloring like this, your marker, your uh, Copic marker is not going to dry out on you. Um, so it really makes it easier. I actually started doing this because some of the reels, some of the videos I've been um, filming as I'm coloring, um, obviously coloring a whole image or a whole card or whatever I'm sharing with you guys on Instagram reels, but having them uncapped, it's just a quicker way of me coloring. And all these years, 15 years of coloring with Copics, I don't know why I've insisted on recapping, uncapping, click, 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 click with the markers all the time. Um, so this is like a new, a new, new gen here, keeping my markers uncapped. And I don't keep like a million of them. These just whatever two that I'm actively, two or three that I'm actively working with are the ones that I keep uncapped. It's been very freeing. I find coloring a little bit easier actually because it's like you just pick it up and dab it on. All right, so there we go. We got our cute little gradient snow letters that I forgot to do before when we were coloring. Let's see. Ah, uh, Danielle's going through her lawn fawn stash and her cards tomorrow might be ocean themed. I love it. Getting a little carried away by old stamp sets. Perfect. Thank you so much, Arlene. Ooh, have fun. Hope you see lots of dolphins. Meg says I've gotten her hooked on ombre letters for cards. I love it. So fun. All right. So now we can kind of go, um, let's go ahead and emboss our Bring On The. So this is just a piece of Rainforest cardstock, um, also from Lawn Fawn. And I'm going to use my Misty for this. And I'm just going to start by putting the cardstock in. And so we're gonna be using Riley's ABCs. And I love how the clear stamp sets come with multiples of quite a few of the letters so that you can do like whole words or whole sentences at once. What's also nice is the letters are cut into rectangular blocks. So it's gonna make it really easy for me to be able to line the letters up into a word. So I've got my B, and then I'll grab an R, and I'm just gonna kind of butt the two up together. And I know that the spacing is going to be accurate. So we'll do the I. Eyes are a little tricky because they're just so skinny, but we'll get it, we'll get it more aligned once we get more letters around it. The N, so I kind of start to push them together. And then I'm gonna grab a G, <coughs> excuse me. 
All right, and then I'm gonna space it out um, so I'll have enough room to trim. I'm gonna be trimming these into word blocks. So bring on, we'll do another N. So see, I love that the set has multiple letters. And then we'll do the word the. I'm gonna actually move my magnet down here. So. Do an H. And then an E. And you can see how pretty easy it is to line these guys up all in a block. And I know that the spacing is gonna be accurate and it's gonna look cute. I'll close my Misty down. And I am gonna, because we're gonna white emboss, I'm gonna use the Rabbit Hole Designs cotton powder tool. This is gonna take any of that static cling off the cardstock so I won't get um, any white flecks from my white embossing. I also think it helps make the embossing smooth out a lot nicer. Um, I forgot to grab my white powder, so excuse me while I reach. But now I'm going to also use that same, um, you know, Yeti ink pad, pigment ink pad. Sorry, words sometimes are hard. And when I do white embossing, I like to ink the stamp up twice. So I'm going to ink and press, and I press gently. You don't want to press really hard. We don't want to kind of smoosh out the letters. And then I'm going to do it again. Whoops. Um, doing it again is allowing more ink to sit on the surface of the cardstock. So right now, some of that ink is soaking into the cardstock. So I find kind of doing it a second time allows more ink to sit on the top. And I have found that my favorite white embossing powder is the Brutus Monroe Alabaster White. That's what this is. <laughs> the cap is in there, so I'll remember. Um, so I'm just going to kind of take up a little bit of that powder. You can see I don't have any flecks, any little specks of white because of that cotton powder tool, which is awesome. And now I'm going to use my embossing gun. And I know usually the sound will cut out so it's not super loud, but if it's super loud, I apologize. I like to preheat my gun just for a couple seconds before I bring it to the paper so that it's really, really nice and hot. Hey, Richard, thanks for popping in. And then I'm gonna go ahead and emboss my letters. I kind of stay in one small area until it starts to turn. And I'll move on down that sentiment. I also think having it just a little distance from my glass tabletop also helps the heat bounce off the glass and comes to the back of the cardstock, believe it or not. So some of the heat radiates. And so we've got bring on the, okay. And now we are, I'm just checking and making sure I'm not forgetting anything. Yeah, we're going to just start doing some assembly. So. Here's a good idea, you guys. A good idea for me. If you don't know already, hi, my name's Jen Cherkis, and I'm really bad at getting my card fronts onto card bases. If I do, and because of that, a lot of people got holiday cards from me this year that were postcards, and I say that with air quotes, in an envelope, AKA, I didn't have enough time to put them all on card bases. They were either gonna go out the way that they were or they weren't gonna go out at all. So what if all of my holiday cards this year, I use the outside in stitched rectangle, that means I have to put it on a card base, you guys, because this is smaller than a card and that will irritate me, that will bother me. I do, however, think that quite a few of you that did get my holiday cards this year got a little chuckle out of the fact that it wasn't on a card base. You know, 
if I can make people laugh. Uh, my friend Joan Mowers, who lives here on the Cape and used to take my classes at the store I managed and still takes a lot of my online classes, if not all, she said that for minutes she was trying to open my card and she saw, finally figured out, oh, it's, it's just a card front. And then she was like, duh, it's a Jen card. And she got quite a chuckle out of it. So, you know what? That's all good. But... Maybe if I use an outside-in stitched rectangle on all of my cards, um, then I'll have to put it on a card base. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Shari says, and this is why all of her cards are in card bases, because she uses the outside-in stitched rectangle on a lot as well. So I'm just adhering this down flat to a card base you guys january new year new me we'll see how long this lasts okay and then i have just a stitched hillside from lawn fawn that i die cut the hillside and then i put that through the outside in stitched rectangle so i will have um stitching on the three sides i'm gonna glue that down flat That's gonna line up right like that. And now I'm gonna add my snowmobilers on here with some foam squares, um, which are over here. Thanks, Mary. See you later. Awesome. Six cards stenciled. I have a feeling she's probably already left because that comment was a little bit ago and my comments are delayed, but high five to you, Mary, for getting six cards stenciled during your lunch break. That's productive. Just adding a little bit to the skis so those don't get bumped. My ink stand is becoming a collection dish for my little backings because <laughs> I forgot to pull my little dish out. It's farther away. This was right here. It works. All right, so we're going to add this to the card. And now we are going to put the sentiment on. So. And I kind of wanted that in place so I would kind of know where I was going to do this. So what I am going to do is using my station again, mainly because it has a grid on it, I'm going to take my little letters here and place them on the mat, evenly spaced, nice and straight. if they cooperate. Okay, just like so. Snow, just like snow. Then I'm gonna continue to use this Best Ever Craft Tape and I'm gonna just press down and pick them up. And I'm gonna actually add some foam strips to the backs of these letters. So this is the 3L scrapbook adhesive foam strips. I love, love, love. And I'm looking for my scissors. Here they are. Maybe they were hiding somewhere nearby. So we're gonna add some foam strips to the backs of all of these letters. And I just think these foam strips are so quick and easy to work with. I start by putting the straight strips down first. And then the S and the O that are curved, I'll cut little pieces and just 
kind of space those out. So on the O, I always like to kind of put one on all four sides. And then the S, I think we're gonna just put three. One, two, but it's the perfect width. And then whatever I have left, I'm just gonna put right back on my backer sheet. It'll get used for something. And so now we've got foam on all the letters. So I'm gonna peel the liner off. just trim my nails. They were trimmed before and now they're really trimmed. So I like to, you know, challenge myself during a live and have no fingernails to peel things off with. All right. So now I'm going to bring my card back in. I'm going to lay it on the station nice and straight. And what I love is it comes with a zero centering magnetic ruler. So I'm gonna lay this down and I want my sentiment to be a little bit high. I'm gonna lay this down so that it is centered. And because I've got a lot of chunky stuff going on, I just use the magnets and put them on the ends of the ruler so it'll hold it in place. And now I'm going to be able to lay my letters down centered on my sentiment, really utilizing that zero centering ruler. I actually think, ah, I think I'm a little too high. This is the week of this. I did this when I was teaching to retailers this week. All right, let me scooch my ruler down a little bit because I need room for bring on the right we gotta bring on the okay do over so i'm using the guides on the ruler as a guide for centering my sentiment um there we go and then i'm just gonna gently peel the tape back. If you weren't using foam squares and you were using your glue tube, that is totally okay. I just recommend um, letting it rest. So I would have left it there for a little bit with the tape in place um, so that it would give time for your glue to set. <laughs> Monique, I hate snow. Oh, good. Monique isn't going to jinx her world. She's going to say bring on the fun. I love that, Monique. Um, yeah, I don't like the mess of snow. I don't like the cold of snow. I don't like the after effects, but while it's snowing and right after it is pretty, I will say, but three seconds later, it's no longer pretty. So you can use your paper trimmer to cut out your block letters, which is what I did on my original card, but I'm going to go wild and crazy today and just use my scissors and cut out each word separately. Bring on the, bring it on. All right, and now I'm gonna do the same thing. I am going to use this board to line up my little words so that they are evenly spaced and straight-ish because I hand cut them so I'm being kind to myself and then I'm going to use that same best ever craft tape and I can pick all three up at once flip it over and I am gonna use foam strips again, but I'm gonna use double foam strips. So I peel off two at once and adhere these to the back. Okay, 
away. We'll peel the liners off. And I'm gonna put my card back in place. And I need the zero centering ruler just to center my sentiment. Um, so I'm gonna make sure that that is in place here. I don't even really need to see where the word snow is because I just know I want this to be centered on the card. So here we go. I'm gonna tuck it under a little bit because it's a little bit high. I still went kind of high, but I'm okay with it. Let's see. Let's see how far down I, there's my letters. So there we go. There we go. Tucked it as much as I could. Gently peel the tape off. Oh, I tucked it real low, you guys. Real low, that's okay. I thought I was giving myself enough room, but let's see, I am going to peel the word off, hopefully, and leave the tape. Look at me. We're gonna trim even more. Live crafting is always interesting. These are the things that happen behind the scenes that you guys don't necessarily see in a blog post. There we go. Just need a little space, a little bit of, little bit. There we go, all worked out. All right, so now we've got that done. And what we are gonna do, ooh, Bonnie just came in for shoveling. Yeah, cause Bonnie lives, I think Bonnie, remind me, but you, well, you definitely live off Cape Cod in Massachusetts, more Western than me. We just have rain here, Bonnie. Sorry, not sorry. Hi, Rebecca, Marco. Hello, hello. All right, wouldn't be a Jen Shirkus card without some sparkle, right? Always gotta have a little glitter all of the things. So I am gonna be using Distress Rock Candy. And I've been using this a lot lately for sugar on the edges of my chocolates that I shared for my Tim Holtz card, edges of donuts that I shared for a, a recent Simon Says Stamp card, and now it's going to be my snow. So when I use the Distress Rock Candy, I do like to use the Distress Collage Medium. I like that it's a bit thicker, and I just really think it holds the chunk of the rock candy really nicely. So I'm gonna start by adding some along the ground of the snowmobile here. And I'm fairly generous with how much I put down. I'll show you guys up close to the camera and you can see. Um, see if I can get it to focus without bumping. But it's nice and thick. I'm also gonna dust the bottom of the snowmobile sled. Okay. And I decided this time I didn't want to go take away from the stitching of the hillside, but I am adding some right at the top of the hillside. I'll add a little bit back here where that's peeking through. <clears throat> so I'm going to just put some of that on. And this is not going to look pretty, you guys, until the Distressed Collage Medium dries clear, but we'll look at my original sample again at the end of the video so you guys can kind of remember what it looked like. And then I added some at the bottoms of these snow letters. And I like to kind of play with the height that I put on these. I don't... I don't have it all go up evenly up the letters because I want it to kind of look like snow is kind of not dripping, but organic, right? As snow falls, it's not an all even straight line. And we're gonna add that. And I'm fairly generous when I put it on just so that it will 
fill that whole collage area. And you can see I'm rotating my card because my card is, my letters are up on squares. Some of that extra glitter is going to get trapped. So you guys can see it looks cloudy right now. It's not going to look clear until it dries. Um, I'll kind of show, bring in the difference. You can see it just sparkles. You don't see all that glue once it dries. And then the last thing that I did, very, very simple, but um, two things. One, um, Jane sent some, a little, just a little packet of sequins. I know uh, some companies do this, just a little mixture of some fun sequins. So I added a few of those to my card. And then I also, in the center of the snowflakes I stamped in teal, I just added some little dots of glossy accents. So I'm gonna dump these sequins out. This is a little tray from Trinity Stamps that I love. Kind of just makes it easier to work with them. And I'm gonna find the little iridescent sequins in here. And I already figured out the placement on my original card, so I'm gonna copy that. Ooh. Static electricity, you guys. It's a real problem here in the winter. I like to always, I like to tuck a little sequin behind the letters. I think it looks super cute. So I'm doing that again. All right. So I'm going to just use glossy accents to put the sequins on. I either use glossy accents or my Lawn Fawn glue tube or uh, Distress Collage Medium will work as well. Um, but because I'm going to add glossy accents to the snowflakes, I figure why not just do both. And so, like I said, I just did little dots in the centers wherever I could reach, just for a little added something, something. Oops. And this one I'm gonna tuck behind the S. And then dabbing the center. I will bring my finished dry card up to the camera in just a minute to show you guys. Maybe you didn't notice these little details before because they are subtle. Scooch that one behind the W. And then one more. So I like to put, kind of put my sequins at, in a diagonal. I like to do odd numbers. I usually do like a three and a two. It's kind of my thought process, plan of attack. So that card is done, but I'll bring this one into screen since, but you can see just those iridescent little sequins here and there and you can see the glossy accents in the center of those snowflakes. So very subtle, but a little bit of sparkle sometimes goes a long way. I actually was very tempted to put Prisma glitters on something on the snowmobile, but I didn't. I kind of kept it simple-ish, <laughs> as simple as I get at least. Um, but yeah, isn't that so pretty with the ombre letters, with a little sparkle of snow, Reminds me of when snow does actually uh, look pretty. So that is it, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me for Get Kraken on Christmas. Uh, remember all the details. Um, I have a lot of the main supplies that I use today are linked in the description of the video. And then you always can pop on over to my website where I have some more detail shots and all the supplies linked as well as specific 
Copic markers and everything that I used. Um, thank you guys so much for thumbs upping the video. I really appreciate that. If you're not subscribed already, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel because I am working really hard to actually post some videos and not just do lives, although I love, love, love to teach you guys live. Uh, Tracy says, Jen, for 2023, all get cracking on Christmas cards on card bases and envelopes addressed. Ooh, Tracy, I don't know. That's, that's going to be tough. That's going to be tough. But definitely card bases. Card bases for sure. Um, I mean, look at me go, guys. Get cracking on Christmas. I got two cards done. Both are on card bases. I'm so proud of myself. So proud. So help me keep at it this year. Uh, I'll help you guys get cracking on Christmas. You help me get those cards on card bases. And thank you guys so much for joining me. And I will see you guys all next month. Remember, the post is always on the third Thursday of the month. You guys can post your holiday cards whenever you want with the hashtag get cracking on Christmas. And I'll be sure to give you guys a heads up of when I'll be live next. Have a great Friday.